I come from an insular community that does not give a voice to women. Very selfish, April. This is why I'm here to mm. help break the systemic issue that's going on in my community. Keep it simple, like me. It should be that women should be reinvigorated to stand up for themselves regarding their own representation back at home. I started the Instagram account Flappish Girl. Funny videos that specifically address the Jewish community, women's roles within the Jewish community. Honey, I need you dinner. I'll have that message from that one girl every so often. It's like I can't, I can't stop. I have to do it for that one girl. Hi, my name is Adina, also known as Flappish Girl. I'm a social media influencer, and I also just ran for city council in Brooklyn. So I grew up in Brooklyn, which has a thriving and very diverse Orthodox Jewish community. And I always just felt myself questioning, you know, things I was learning in school, especially with regards to certain standards of modesty for women and certain roles that women were asked, you know, suggested to, to play. One of the restrictions that was put on me is the restriction and limit to accessing the internet. And already in fourth grade, I convinced my parents to let me go online. And I think that was the first time in my life where I sort of like exited the microcosm of Brooklyn and sort of understood that there are other people practicing other religions, living in other family dynamics, experiencing life in their own way. And it just helped me like really understand, observe and analyze femininity and the way it was being displayed around the world and, you know, in ways that I would have never encountered had I not gotten online. I started the Instagram account Flappish Girl, that's my alter ego persona, around two and a half years ago, and really it just exploded. You know, I today I have almost 50,000 followers. My name is Rabbi Stein and don't even think about getting a second earring hole or a nose ring, you will never get a shidduch. I would say I lost all my friends. I sort of had to like build it again through, through Instagram. But I understand that that's part of the burden that comes along with fearing a certain torch. When you're driving in Flappas and you meet the one and only. Hello. Oh, wow. Adina, you're such an inspiration. You're so real. You're so authentic. Thank you so much. I want to know if you had one message to share with the whole entire world, what would it be? Take all those critics in your life. Take all that negativity and let that pump you up. What began as just, you know, churning out very humorous videos that had that subtle message at the bottom, then became sort of this need that I saw within the community for more vocal female activists. So I'm about to enter the Amplified Her Forum, where women are unified to elect other women. And I'm so excited to be here tonight and sit amongst my fellow candidates. In 2019, uh, Jumani Williams won public advocate, which then created a vacancy for his seat. It was for this district, the district I grew up in, and I just felt that I was not seeing any other Jewish women trying to fill these seats or running for city council. Our first candidate to welcome to the stage is Adina Sash. Woo -hoo! Yes. This is why I'm in this race. I come from an insular community that does not give a voice to women. I love my community. I'm so proud of my roots. I'm so proud of the progress that my community has made. But when it comes to putting females in the front and when it comes to giving equality for women's voices, we are still stuck in the dark ages and everyone is afraid to speak out because they're stuck in their role. There was a lot of backlash. The synagogue lists, the email lists that rabbis have to communicate with their congregants were flooded with messages on the importance of not voting for Adina, AKA Flappish Girl. Hi, Adina. Hi, how are you? You have a, well, let's take you have a, a second? You are, you're, you're coming across where I'm afraid that my daughter's gonna see what you're saying. Oh, comes across. Because, Adina, I can't control comes across. Once, 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 once. It's, it, it didn't come in in a 
positive, beautiful experience. Actually, I've had many women who okay, called me and thanked me. Okay. There were magazines that, of course, rejected my ad because my face was, you know, is offensive as a female. I sort of tried to use like their logic against them and I had a series of ads where the, f the first ad was my father a picture of my father talking about his daughter, Adina, and why you should vote for his daughter, Adina. And then the next one was my husband and my two sons. And then I'm very proud to say that the third ad that came out in that series, I was able to convince the editors of two prominent Jewish magazines to publish a picture of my 85-year-old grandmother. Okay, hey, come on in. I'm not the old woman yet, so I don't want blanket on my lap. <laughs> This is Safta. Safta, aren't you proud of the fact that you were one of the first women to be shown in the FJJ magazine with your face? I didn't believe it, but uh, they put it. But were you proud? Of course, but how come they put it? Because I convinced them to. I was so happy when I saw it, matter of fact, we're going to make a picture and to hang it on the wall. She's a trailblazer. She's out on the battlefield all the time. So I see myself as a person who is less concerned about credit and more concerned about being that catalyst for other people to wake up. And if that, if the backlash is gonna be on me and I'm gonna lose clients and I'm gonna lose friends and I'm not gonna get any credit and no one's gonna remember that I started it, that is fine, that will just be my role. What keeps me going, even though there's so little, you know, resources of encouragement that I can find, is really sometimes that just one voice of that one girl who will reach out to me privately or anonymously and just say, I'm, I can't message you from my real account. I hope that girls can learn to cultivate hearing their inner voice, hearing their instinct, hearing their gut, and questioning any other voices that are overlaying certain expectations on them because of their gender or because of societal expectation. Do you know what change we could cause? What ripple effects there could be across communities, cities, states, if each one of us could take that stand in the area where we're most powerful, where we're most passionate? It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, and that's, I think that that's part of with it, being a Jewish female and part of being part of the Jewish religion is having that responsibility to repair the world in the ways you can while you're here. Right. And I think there's nothing more Jewish than doing your part in repairing the world so that it can be given over as a more healthy legacy for, for our children, for generations. Hi everyone, I'm Sari, the producer of Her Stories. Click here to watch more episodes, and if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and leave us a comment letting us know what other people and topics you want to see on the show. And make sure to subscribe to Now This Her. Thanks for watching.